feel like this room is really dark and I don't know why and these lights are flickering and I don't know why. <laughs> I'm making a quiet video today because Aviva is working in the other room. I don't want to disturb her. But hello, I hope you're doing well and I hope you're feeling safe and okay in general. So I wanted to make some content on this channel obviously while we're all in like social distancing mode but I obviously don't want to be insensitive and just jump straight in. So I thought I'd start with like a little video, something that is about social distancing, but also is helpful and informative and doesn't stress you out any more than you probably already are. I don't know about where you are, but in the UK, our government's not doing all that much and it's really stressing people out. So I thought this might help as well as all the media we're seeing is currently influxes of stress and fear, so. Hope this helps. <laughs> so I am actually an expert in working from home. I've worked from home for three years now and before that I did a three year degree. I feel like I've done all of the working from home but I'm not naturally very good at motivating myself when I'm not at my peak mental state. So I thought this might help a little bit and I can give you some of my best tips for working from home or being at home a lot from a self-isolation accidental queen. <laughs> yeah, maybe it will help someone. I hope it does. There's a lot of advice about working from home right now that's going around the internet and some of it's a little bit judgy and a little bit weird so I thought let's create a non-judgmental space for some of this advice. So a lot of the advice going around right now is saying create routine and suggesting you do quite a lot of things to create that routine. I would argue start small. So for me personally I think the sleep routine is like the best thing I've done for keeping routine in my life. I go to bed at a certain time and I wake up at a certain time. I make the most of working from home, I sleep in a bit later than most people, but I still wake up at a certain time every day. I wake up at 8, 8.30 and that really helps. In terms of timing and routine, I'd also really recommend taking a lunch break. I think of it as as important as having a commute just to like break up the day in manageable chunks. Dedicate a space for working in, I use my kitchen table, my housemate Aviva uses her desk. Just have a space that you're working in, preferably not in your bedroom, but obviously that can't be helped sometimes. If you're in your bedroom, use a desk. If your workday is usually made up of single long tasks, for example, writing or editing, I'd really recommend using the Pomodoro timer method. It's so good. You can download a free app for your phone and basically it divides your work time into 25 minutes of focus, five minutes of like relax. 25 minutes of focus, five minutes of relax. And then every two hours, you can take a 15 minute break to relax. I find it really helpful for when I've got those days of just long chunks of doing things that you need to be fully absorbed in. It's like really helpful for focus. Try and move around at least once a day. I am not the best at this, but my mental health improves so much when I actually leave my house, which isn't always possible in this climate, but also like, going and like moving my body. So I'm planning to go for lots of walks in the park near my house and I'm also planning on doing a little bit of like bedroom yoga. I think both of those will be really good for my brain. So speaking of the mental side of things, I find that's the first thing to go when I'm in my house a lot. Managing your mental health when you're seeing people less and going outside less is quite challenging but I have ways of doing it. I personally find that when I have periods of not seeing people, I lose a bit of that optimism and hope. And to counteract that, I try and create little things to look forward to at the end of each day. So for example, you're cooking a nice meal you've been looking forward to, or you're FaceTiming your mum, <laughs> or you're playing board games with your housemate. Like there's something fun that you have planned that isn't a, as big as, you know, going out for a drink or a curry, but it's like, still nice and something to look forward to. I think of these as like mini plans, like you probably aren't gonna put it in your calendar, but it still is giving you like the good, the good vibes and the optimism and the thing to look forward to. Another thing that's really good is you can make the most of the positive bits of working from home because there are lots of positives. That's why people want to work from home. So for example, I get to get up an hour later than I probably would if I was commuting, which is so good. I can listen to music on speakers when I'm working and I can burn a candle while I work. Like just nice little things that are like treats. You can do them at home. This one's a little bit more challenging, but I would really, really recommend keeping your space as tight tidy as possible. So I'm the messiest person. I'm clean but messy, I would say. But my mood drops so significantly when my room or my space is untidy. So I tend to dedicate around 10 minutes a day to just clearing things up. Only 10 minutes, that's all we really need. But I always try and keep my kitchen as clean as possible and my bedroom as clean as possible. And I always make my bed in the morning. I find that having that clear big space in the middle of your room really, really helps your brain. Oh my God, I think Boris Johnson's announced we're actually, we're actually properly self-isolating now. <sighs> Fucking finally. <laughs> I try and log out of work or studying at the same-ish time every day. I have an hour window from six till seven 
and within that window, oh, there's something floating. Within that window, I will log off and stop work. So obviously sometimes it can't be helped, but generally I really try and stick between 6 and 7 p.m. as my off time. In particular, I really like to cook after 6 or 7 p.m. just so that I have that physical break between my work and then my playtime. And I'm doing something nice and relaxing, but also like not on screens in that time. Speaking of fun and games and things to look forward to, let me tell you what I'm planning on doing that's gonna be fun and good while we are all at home. The first thing is I've ordered a PlayStation and I'm going to play Spyro. I used to love Spyro. We never had a games console in my house, but one of my friends had a games console and we played Spyro all the time and it's so much fun. So when they released the Reignited trilogy, I was like, yes, in basket now but I also didn't have a games console. So a games console's arriving tomorrow. On the technological front, I've also got a Kindle. So I have started reading Such a Fun Age, which is a book I wanted to read for quite a while. I'm so glad it's out now. So that's something nice that I can do that involves screen time, but not as intense work screen time as I normally take. I'm gonna make the most of cooking. I love cooking, uh, but you know, sometimes you go out for meals with friends and so you don't get to do it as often as you'd like. I'm a real fan of it. I'm actually probably gonna make a what I eat in a week because I'll be cooking so much. And I know people are gonna be like, oh my God, but you're going out to the shops. I'm trying to do a weekly shop so that I'm in public spaces in close proximity to people as little as possible. Also weekly shops are fun. You can plan what you're gonna eat. I've got fajitas for this week. I've got stir fry. When it comes to being social, FaceTime dates. I'm gonna be FaceTime dating my friends. I think I'm also meeting a friend in a park one day. <laughs> the park by both of our houses. So we can just like wander around and walk and chat, which is so weird and like weird, but it'll be really nice. However, other friends that live further away, I'm gonna FaceTime them and I'm really excited for that. I have accepted finally that I'm an extrovert. And while it's lovely that Aviva will be home, so it'll be good to speak to her and I'll walk to Jack's, they'll still be like, and a void that needs filling. So I'm hoping FaceTime will do that for me. I'm also gonna get Disney Plus as soon as it's available in the UK. I think it's seven days from when I'm recording this video. But for me personally, when I'm anxious, which I have been the past couple of days, it makes me want to actively avoid any kind of stressful TV. So the idea that there will be a whole host of Disney movies available to me is so exciting. I'm always craving stuff that's like good quality, but also not incredibly stressful or scary. And I think I'm probably gonna find that on Disney+. Plus. I'm a sensitive sausage, so I just need some less stressful viewing for when I'm anxious. I'm also really excited to make the most of time with hanging out with my housemate. Aviva and I have gone and bought some board games. Again, we got Spyro, we got a PlayStation. We're just gonna try and make plans in the evening and have some fun. Something I've done in the past that I'd really, really recommend is teaching yourself a new skill. If you're kind of in that weird place where work is not that busy, but you want to be productive and you're craving productivity. I remember one time when work was just chill for me and not, not much was going on and I wasn't making much money. I taught myself how to use Photoshop and built my skill set out, which I just, I'm so grateful for now. I use Photoshop every week at least. It really helped with my like expansion of my skills, but also my mental health, because I was doing something that was good for me and pushing my brain. There's loads of resources online if you want to teach yourself stuff. I know of one called Skillshare. Don't worry, this isn't a spawn, but Skillshare, please sponsor me. Also, is this not like the best opportunity to binge watch? Like start a new series, start a new book. There is so much good stuff on Netflix right now. I'm gonna recommend you a couple of things if you haven't already tried them. I really love Cheer. Cheer was such a good documentary series. I'm also halfway through The Pharmacist, which I'm really enjoying. That's a little more stressful and also a bit about opioid addiction. So like, if you find that stressful, then maybe don't do that one, but it's really enjoyable. I'm halfway through Ugly Delicious, which is a show I love. It's all about food and about David Chang, who is a restaurant owner and chef. I think also Miss Americana has quickly become one of my favorite documentaries. And if you're looking for slightly reassuring content about of viruses and stuff would really really recommend the Netflix explained episode called the next pandemic or the new pandemic maybe. I found it really informative and helpful in learning about what's actually going on. Books wise what have I picked up recently? In terms of books after I finish Such a Fun Age I plan to move on to Girl, Woman, Other which I've just been sent in paperback. Mad excited to read that. So yeah these are all my thoughts and my tips. I hope you're doing okay. So yeah, I hope this video helps someone at least entertain themselves while we're all in social distancing phase. Um, I'm not going to chat loads about why we should be social distancing, but I will leave some articles down there in case you would like to learn any more about why it's really important. But yeah, I hope you're doing okay and you're not stressing too much. It's quite an anxiety inducing time for all of us. So yeah, I'm thinking of you. I hope you're doing okay. I'm such an anxiety magnet when it comes to crazy unknown situations or new situations. 
So I hope this channel can provide a little bit of like chill in amongst the chaos that is COVID-19. So yes, please do your best in keeping others safe and stay positive. I love you lots. I will see you in my next video.